it's late muzzleloader season. Me and Warver are out looking around in the snow for tracks and whatnot, trying to figure out what the heck the deer are doing. But he killed his bow buck right back here. Him and Gooch shot that great big one right on this ridge behind me. And we drove around all the parking lots that lead into this spot before we came in and there hasn't been anybody in here since the snow it snowed like five or six days ago. We haven't seen hardly any deer tracks though either. So we're working our way up the edge of the lake and looking for sign leading up into one of these coves where we think the deer and hopefully a big buck's hanging out at. You ain't seeing much so far. No. Other coyotes and squirrels and the like. We've had a lot of luck during the late muzzleloader season in the last five to ten years. Seems like this is the one gun season that doesn't get very much pressure at all here in Iowa. You guys have seen some of our shotgun season hunts and how many people can be out here on the public land during those, but this late muzzleloader season does not get a lot of attention. Me and Ted haven't seen even any tracks in the snow from where hunters have been in here over the weekend. If you're considering hunting with a gun in Iowa, this is a very very good option on public or private land for that matter we got snow right now so we're able to speed scout and figure out what these deer are doing running through this area pretty quick today and we have not seen any fresh tracks in the snow like ted said the snow's five six days old so if there was deer in this immediate area we'd be seeing tracks along these transitions and stuff and we're just not so if we don't find something here pretty quick we may bail on this spot and skip over to the next one Lots of country to work with though, with very little hunting pressure right now. So, see if we can get into him here late. Greg's also down the road hunting. So hopefully he's having some luck this evening. All right, it's the afternoon of January 4th. Putting the orange on once again. It's been a few days since I've been out. I think last Thursday it would have been New Year's Eve was the last time I hunted. A couple days before that, we've got a bunch of snow and then about an inch or two inches of ice on top of that. So the last couple times I'd been out, it was extremely loud, extremely crunchy. It made it really difficult to get in anywhere quietly. Anyways, had a good hunt that evening. It took me over an hour to walk in. Normally what would be like a five minute walk it took me an hour, just basically step by step, just slowly working my way in there. So anyway, saw a bunch of deer that evening. There was two bucks that I would have shot and the closest one finally got to where I could get a good look at him. And it was literally just seconds after the end of legal shooting time. So I passed on the shot and, uh, it's in the mid 30s today, it's warmed up quite a bit, and the snow and that layer of ice has softened to the point where, you know, it's, it's not so loud anymore. So this evening I'm heading into a spot that should look familiar. This is uh, the location where Aaron shot his buck back in the shotgun season. And here we are a few weeks later during the late muzzleloader season, and with this snow on the ground now, I can see that nobody's been back in here, at least the best I can tell. So that's, that's good to know that hopefully there's gonna be, you know, some undisturbed deer back in here. I'm set up in this deadfall here. So when Aaron and I hunted here during the shotgun season, we started out about 125 yards farther down that way. That's where we saw the buck cross the ice. But now I'm set up a little bit farther down. I'm basically right in the middle to where I can cover the maximum amount of this bottom here. A couple, well, three years ago, when the hunting was really good in here, this, this bottom, and primarily the west end of it, all those deer were coming out and just congregating kind of in one area, and they were just hammering that duck potato, which was back in that, that corner right there. It was as I was coming down in here and, and glassing down into this bottom. You can see, I mean, there's a fair amount of tracks, but not a lot, and they're not concentrated. They're just kind of coming out of, you know, all this bedding cover. It's just more transitional movement, it seems, as opposed to concentrated feeding like they were a few years back. So there's still deer, obviously, down in here but not to the extent as what I was hoping for. And I almost just bailed on this spot and thought about going somewhere else. But I still very well could have a good hunt here tonight. It's just not what I was hoping to see or expected to see. I do have an antlerless tag for this county. So if I get a doe out here in easy gun range, might have to drop the hammer, put a little more meat in the freezer before the end of the season. We're bailing on that spot. 
Gonna go back to a spot where we saw a bunch of deer in a field earlier. Seems like there's probably gonna be a bunch of deer coming out there this afternoon, possibly a buck or two, so. Gonna go see what we can do with that. Lots of tracks on the road. Yep. Good sign. Alright, let's go kill one though. Got about an hour and a half before dark. out in this field that's up over this ridge. This ridge is full of thick cedars on top and there's like honey locusts down in the bottom. Orb says a lot of times they like to eat that when it's snow on the ground like this and they like eating them locust pods. So we're down in this cove where we can see a long ways so if anything dumps down in here off these ridges going out to that field or coming down here eating locust pods we can get a shot at it. A lot of the sign that we've that we saw was trails coming out of those cedars right across the face of that ridge and going up in there. Saw lots of trails right there. We should be about 80 yards from the majority of those trails.
Just stand in there. Just 
looked for blood all down this trail. We saw where the bullet hit that tree. Looks like it might have been just under him or just over him. We're not really sure. We're going to go look at the footage back on the computer just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure it's a clean mess. I felt, felt good when he was walking up. And, I mean, I definitely pulled the trigger, but I was, felt like I was on him when I did. But I'm sure it probably went under him or over him. So we'll go take a look at it and make sure. But on to the next one. Go on to the next one. I guess that's how I'm going to finish out my evening here. Deer movement wasn't very good tonight. Just sitting here thinking that we need to come down in here and do some coyote hunting after the season's over. This is a perfect spot for it. All this, you know, thick, marshy bottom down in here. Literally just thinking that. I look over to my right and there's a coyote. I just come out of the grass and started working my way. He gets out of the frame and then cuts back into the grass. So I did, uh, I did a mouth squeak. He popped back out and started angling this way and got to... Probably 100 yards right there, 98 yards. So he comes in, angles towards me, gets to 100 yards. Then he stopped there and I was aiming at him. And then he, he broke and started coming this way and I thought I would have let him. He probably would have come all the way in, but I didn't know if he was gonna cut up into this thicker grass. And if he did, you know, it gets to the point where, you know, it's over the top of him, he'd be, he'd be tough to see. 100 yards facing straight towards me, crank the magnification up a little bit and just got solid on this log in front of me. I heard the bullet whop. Looks like I got a little extra weight to drag out with me tonight. Well, here it is. I would say it's a medium-sized coyote. It's not real big. Had a beautiful pelt on it. Since I shot this thing, there's been a pack that started howling and yipping off to the northwest of me. And just as I sat down here, it sounded like there was two or three more off to the southeast of me. So, as I said before, there are a lot of coyotes in this area. And when Aaron and I were hunting in here during shotgun season, we saw that, that three-legged coyote. Like I said, maybe I could have let him come closer, but I figure with a coyote, you better take the shot when you get it when they're within range because they can you know they can be gone in an instant 
I was afraid if he got in that grass, I was going to miss my opportunity. So 100 yards off a good rest with this muzzle loader. Um, you know, it's, it's a uh, Thompson Center Omega, and I've got a, a Vortex 2.5 by 10 uh, scope on there. It's a really, really nice scope. Shooting 100 grains of uh, 777 pellets, so 250 grain pellets, and then a 250 grain Barnes expander. I mean, it puts a hurting on them. So it made for an exciting end to an otherwise <laughs> pretty uneventful evening. But I have a suspicion that we'll be back in here at some point in January, February, March, or anytime we have the, you know, the right weather conditions for calling coyotes, we'll be back in here and try to pick off a few more in this area. Ready to see this giant? I guess. I'm not. It makes me sick. See the snow kick up right behind him. You can see the bullet right there. Mm. The snow kicks up right there. Looks like it's just a little bit low, which I remember when I was looking through the scope, it was, I felt like I had it on him, but it was just a touch low. What, right when I stopped, it's obvious that right when I stopped him, I pulled the trigger instead of just having it on him and squeezing it off, which is what I should have done, but yeah, you can see the bullet go low. Your on left him. to right was good, it just went low right underneath the pocket. Yeah. You gonna shoot the gun just in case in the morning, make sure something didn't get bumped? Yeah, I'm gonna shoot it, clean it, shoot it a couple times, make sure it wasn't a gun, which I'm pretty sure it wasn't, because I shot it a bunch before muzzleloader season, so shoot it, make sure it's on and get back after him well it stinks that you missed him but the plan did work i mean we used the snow to our advantage and found where fresh sign was at laid down the last four or five days and yeah deer were on the move pretty good this evening so even though it was 40 degrees yeah but it's been cold and snowy and crappy weather and then today it kind of got to warm up and the sun came out and clouds burned off and the deer were on the move this afternoon. I mean, we got in a good spot and had a big boy come by. It just didn't make it happen. Just driving 12, in. What, 12 hours ago, <laughs> I drove by here saw that deer cross the road in front of Didn't me. Didn't you almost hit him with your truck? Yeah, like two or three seconds away. Like had the timing been a little bit different, I would have been in my grill. 